is day and Diane or so March is for me and continuing on my four part series we are on week three and I should be uh, joined momentarily by the fabulous Lori Anna from uh, Bliss Beauty Balance and we're going to be talking about mindfulness um, meditation and basically what it means for self-care for women busy women over 40 and um as I've been saying every week, I think we're beyond bubble baths and um, even, you know, a glass of wine is self-care. I think we're all in agreement that it's more than that. Lori's here. When she asks to join, I'm going to let her in and we are going to go, go, go. Okay. Go. This is like Jiffy Pop for me. When it works, I start to get really excited. I, I just said when you were coming on, I said, this reminds me of when you're a kid. It's like Jiffy Pop. Every time you do Jiffy Pop, it was so exciting. It was like the minute it started to happen, you're like, yay. I know. I so you're like hurt. Jiffy Pop. <laughs> Sounds good. So how are you? I'm good. So I was just talking a little bit about why we're here. You know, my theme for the month was marches for me. And my commitment was for every week to come on with a different fabulous woman, woman. And you're, you know, my week three, we started off um, with my friend Kari talking about, you know, using, uh, you know, good health through supplements. And then I had Wendy, a mutual friend of ours, who we're going to be doing something with this weekend, talking about skincare. And I have to say, I'm super excited about today because I love meditation. I'm very bad at it. Um, but I love it because when I do do it and it's been part of my marches for me, I, you know, been doing it every day. Um, and it's probably one of those things that when you do do it, you realize how impactful it is. Yes. Yes. So I want you to, been doing it every day. I want you to introduce you to everybody in Instagram land and, uh, we'll take it from there. Okay. I am Lori Anna. I've been a hairdresser for 35 years. I always love to make people look pretty because I always felt when you got dressed up and did your hair, it made you feel good about yourself. And over the years, I noticed that it's also really important to feel good about yourself from the inside, even if everything isn't perfect on the outside and to love yourself and feel good even with your imperfections not on the most perfect day and that led me to becoming a uh, yoga instructor and a meditation mindfulness coach and I love to talk to people about their mindset because it's such an important part of wellness absolutely and one of the things that I really wanted to kind of make with the dots connected for the marches for me, I said 31 days of self-care, I said, and we have to go beyond bubble baths. And I said, there's not there's anything wrong with that, you know, in, in the words of Larry David, there's nothing wrong with that. But I think that we, we really have to be good as women, especially as we age, that it's not just, you know, frivolous to take care of yourself. It's essential because... If we ain't good, we ain't good for anybody around us. And we can't achieve the things we want. And I, I hate to say this and align the generation behind us, but I don't think it's our mother's middle age. It was very different for them. Um, you know, their life was different, you know, what they were able to do. I see women now in their 40s, 50s, 60s starting, you know, second careers, where second careers were started, you know, probably at 30 when, you know, our moms were younger, you know, 30 or 40. I think it's infinitely possible to do anything until you basically have your last breath. So if we don't take care of ourselves, and like you said, with the mindset, nothing else is going to work. So, you know, I want, I, you know, you, I love that you're always talking about inside out. So, you know I'm big on people talk all the time. There's a lot of words in our field that get thrown around, mindfulness, all these things. And I feel like, I said this last week, you know, what the fuck does it mean? So when somebody <laughs> says to you, you know, Lori, I want to be good from the inside out, but what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> true, true. All these words get thrown around, self-care, self-care, and love yourself from the inside and they become cliches that we never even think about 
But if you think, so I'm going to ask everyone to think for a moment. How would you describe yourself um, if you weren't describing yourself by your hair color or your eye color or what you do for a living? You know, what positive traits do you have on the inside? And sometimes you might ask yourself that question and we never really think about that. So you might not think of things right away. It might be as simple as I'm kind to animals. So and it might be uncomfortable for some people because they really don't have that ability to look inside. Yes, yes, yes. And that's when they're taught that it's, when they're mind. taught that it's egotistical to look at that, like to say nice things about themselves. Like girls were kind of taught, you know, not to like have those kind of like positive vibes like the boys were like, it's good to be this, it's good to be that. But girls sometimes had to always repress those feelings, I think, a little bit, because it sounded cocky. True. And I was just thinking before we got on that I think everyone always thinks the other person is confident. I mean, it's crazy how people will say to me, oh, well, you know, you're good at it. It just comes naturally. It does not come naturally. Believe me. I don't just have this natural confidence from inside. I have to practice and tell myself to put your confidence hat on and just oh. go. Otherwise, I wouldn't do anything. But 90% of the people, and I even had a vision in my head of like my niece, like my eight-year-old niece. 90, I'm going to say about 90% of the people don't just feel good about themselves. Usually we feel good, if we, or especially with our looks. Most of the best looking people that society thinks are good looking kind of also have it from the inside going on too. But it's swagger. It's confidence. It's yeah. confidence. And people don't just really have it naturally. It does take kind of some, some practice. So a little something we can do, a little thing, if you want to challenge yourself, is to maybe write down three things about yourself, three qualities about your spirit, yourself, that don't have to do with your outer world. Mm -hmm. And look at them and read them and kind of start to think about them. And even just by having this um, conversation just makes you aware. And awareness is where it begins. I remember the first person I heard this from was Tony Robbins actually saying, you know, usually people don't wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, hey, gorgeous, you know, hey, handsome, whether it's a woman or a man. Yeah. And then usually if we're getting dressed up to go to a wedding and we get all dressed up and then all of a sudden uh, in my family, my mom always sings the song, I'm so pretty, I'm so pretty <laughs> after it, when you're getting all dressed up to go to a wedding. So if we can start to really feel that way and, you know, you, you kind of train your mind and fake it till you make it. <laughs> but it's so good when you feel well, it. You know what also I, I find very helpful? I say to folks, what would you say to your best friend? How would you describe your best friend? How would your best friend describe you? I think sometimes when we go outside of ourselves, we allow the space for it not to be us. And I, I think, you know, you know, if your best friend was sitting there talking down about themselves, how would you describe them? Now imagine they're doing it for you. And I think that sometimes that can be very helpful to kind of remove yourself a little bit from it to get a better vision. It's almost like the third eye. That's wonderful. And if anyone wants to really try this challenge and begin to start to write down a few things about themselves, and if you're stuck, or even if you do find three or five things about yourself, maybe also ask some friends because it, it can really um, Great idea. begin to, to, to build that up. A hundred percent. And sometimes when we hear it from other people, we'll, 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 see it, we'll, we'll believe it. Um, and that's what the people who love us the most will give us the best feedback for sure. So would and we you, have to be careful with that. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully you ask people I'm who can. I pictured the families, yeah. the families could be your worst critic. I just pictured yeah. asking my, uh, around the dinner table and, I'm, and I was like, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, I, I live with teenagers, so I might not do it myself with my immediate family. I'll call my best friend to do it before. Yeah. Uh, so I am the most excited tonight to have you do this interactive meditation. And um, I don't know if there's a setup for it or if you want to tell everybody, you know, what we're going to do, how it's going to work, but I'm super 
pumped for this. Okay, so let's talk about meditation for a few minutes. Um, meditation and mindfulness and yoga all have the same important definition. One of the qualities that's the same is honestly, all it means, all it means is to be present. And if you could be present for a minute, even a moment, you meditated. And everyone says, um, I'm not good at it. I don't know what one person that doesn't say, or they tried it and they just give up because they say they're not good at it. And I would love to clear up a misconception about meditation. No human being is good at it. Or maybe they get good at it after they've practiced a while. Everything in life is a practice. Yep. We are humans. Our minds have racing thoughts. And usually we're in the past and the present. And all meditation is, is being present. And it's okay that your mind is going to drift. And it's okay. And little by little, the more you practice, your mind won't drift as much. And even if your mind drifts, you still took the time to be still and just calm your nervous system. And meditation could also be a moving meditation. So I want to talk about busy women. There are people that are so busy and they say they don't have time. And a lot of people, we use the excuse that we don't have time, but holy cow, I have clients and I hear their stories and running around with their kids to all the sports, different fields, running around to the sports, working. They, some people, you want to say, okay, get up a little earlier, get up at five and said, some people really go all day and they can't even really get up earlier. So I'm going to say a meditation could be walking. There is a such thing as walking meditation. So for starters, for a busy person, when you're walking, even if it's during the day at your office, when you're walking, really be walking, really notice your feet touching. Don't be on the phone scrolling while you walk. Ah, perfect. If we can put these phones away for a minute. If, so we, can, if we could take the time we use on the phones we, to do other things, we would all be finding more time for self-care. Yep. So be present while you're walking the dog instead of being on the phone while you're walking the dog. Or even yes. when you, when, if you're walking the dog, be present. That's all. And yes. be present when you're washing the dishes could even be a meditation. Absolutely. If you're the dishes and putting them in the dishwasher. And shower is the best. So I just want to say this quick. Shower is the best. Now, when I used to take a shower, I um, would be probably fighting in my head with people, like getting ready for the day and thinking, you know, like, what, you know, on mine, on morning shows, probably thinking about a day at work. And, you know. I thought I was the I, only person who had arguments with myself in the shower. I feel <laughs> actually much more validated right now. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, so instead of fighting, you know, thinking about how the day is going on and being nervous and doing that, you know, or at the end of the day, you might be thinking about the day if you had showers at night. But somehow over time from practicing yoga, actually, and meditation, now my showers are really, truly my showers. And sometimes I'll add a meditation to it. I'll ask the universe or God to just wash away anything that no longer serves me. Okay. And and I'll, I'll maybe say a little like prayer, but even when I don't do that, I notice that I always get all my in insight in the shower. Like I get great ideas. Well, it's let's because be honest. I'm meditating. For most folks, it's where they're truly alone. You, I mean, it, it, the only thing you could have in your phone for is possibly music or something. So you really aren't an undisturbed with the sound of the water. It is very meditative. And I love what you're saying. My favorite part of this, Lori, is that you're also explaining the simplicity of meditation. I think that, again, there's a little connotation that it's kind of like stuck somewhere back in like the ashrams of the 60s. And it's like you have to be doing it for hours and hours with like, you know, in a practice for it, it's not like that. And um, I think that when we do this meditation now, it's going to show everybody how simple it can be. Great, great. So are we ready to meditate? I am. And I'm trying to get 
figure out the bottom of my screen because all I have is words in front of your beautiful face and I cannot get rid of it. But I'm terrified that I'm going to get rid of you, so I'm going to leave it alone. Oh, I don't know if, I don't think the people see those words. No, they don't see it. It's just me. It's distracting. But I get, see, I need to meditate because I'm easily distracted. Oh, so you're going to close your eyes for the meditation. <laughs> I'm in. I'm all in. I'm all yours. Let's do it. If everyone can just um, sit. If you can sit up straight, that's great. But if it's not comfortable to sit up straight, just relax. If you're at home and you can lay down right now, lay down. You could even replay this later and do it again. So I'm going to take us through a guided meditation. It's only going to be about three minutes tops. So anyone could do anything for three minutes. So first, let's just take a breath. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And just do that two more times. Repeat your name to yourself on the inhale. And on the exhale, ask yourself to let go. And you can close your eyes or keep them open. Just settle in. And imagine that you're looking through a kaleidoscope and you see the color red and it's like a burst, beautiful red burst, like a red firework. And you're just gazing at that red light in the kaleidoscope. And you're gonna point that kaleidoscope in the red light at your lowest part of your spine. And visualize that red light shining on your lowest point in your, of your spine. And breathe in the words, I am safe. And continue to look through that kaleidoscope at the red light and bursting out of the red light is now an orange light. And imagine that orange light shining on the next part of your spine, a little higher up, still below your belly button. Beautiful orange light. This represents your creative energy. And breathe in. I am creative. And as you're gazing through the kaleidoscope at the orange light, points it down on your spine. Imagine a burst of yellow light coming out of the orange light and point that right at the mid center of your spine, your core. And this is your willpower. And breathe in, I am strong, and I am worthy. And just sit with that beautiful yellow light, like the sunshine in the center of your body. And bring your mind back to that kaleidoscope, and out of that burst of yellow is now a lavender, a a light green with pink and that light green and swirly pink shine it on your heart center and breathe in the words I am love just maybe picture the word love floating around the green and the pink And out of that beautiful green and pink light in the kaleidoscope, now there's a burst of light blue like the sky. And also imagine Caribbean like blue water. And point that blue water right by your throat, the throat chakra. representing how we are seen and heard in the world and breathe in I am truth and 
And out of that beautiful blue light, there's now a lavender light shining. And point that lavender light to the center of your forehead, your third eye, your intuition. And breathe in, I trust my intuition. And out of that lavender light is a beautiful white light with silver and diamonds shining on the top of your head, your crown chakra connecting you to divine source energy. And breathe in, I am love, I am light. Imagine this white silver light just surrounding your body, loving you and lighting you up and protecting you. And just breathe into this feeling. And imagine the lights inside your body, the red, the orange, the yellow, green, pink, lavender, and the white, silver, diamonds sparkling all around you. And you can open your eyes. Be lying down, just come up slowly or stay lying down. So good. And sometimes by doing the guided meditation, it, it helps to to focus you. I know I like those. It's very difficult to just be. I, it, it's awesome. It's, you know what? I wanted you to do it for like 20 more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, it really is. A, how long was that? I think about, it was very short. I was kind of careful. Maybe it was two minutes. Could have been two minutes. But I mean, I felt it almost instantaneously. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know if anybody else out there or when we replay it. I, I think it's amazing. Oh, cool. I feel very, very chill right now. It's, it, I, I, the reason I want to say that is I think it's powerful that what you can get accomplished in two minutes. Awesome. Oh, I'm so glad that you got that feeling from it. And I know I, that you wouldn't have been able to fake that. <laughs> No, 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 no. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, and if it's, it's true, I mean, I definitely wander throughout it. It's okay. And I come back, but I just, I find that it's those, those moments in between where you really feel present. It's like, you almost feel like you're floating. That's awesome. And I'm so glad you said you want, you wandered in between. So yes, we all oh, uh, yeah. wander in between. It's amazing if someone does it, but anything is amazing. Whatever happens it means you did, you know how to do it. <laughs> I just want people to know. I think the most important piece of today in our time has been that you explained, and in my opinion, you. I think it's a. I think what you said you demystified meditation, and I think again it's another word that people hear frequently, and I think that depending on what you know your mindset is and where your head is, you have different feelings about it. If you haven't practiced, you might think it's very woo woo. Um, or you think you need a lot of time, uh, you need to be, you know, at a retreat. I think there's a lot of thoughts about it. And I think it can be as simple as doing diaphragmatic breathing in your car at the field, you know, um, anything to quiet your nervous system down and be present is very powerful. I loved your talking about the shower. I think there's always time to, listen, we make time for what's important and busy becomes 